much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to this special writer's edition of Pointless Celebrities. This is the show where all the questions have been put to 100 people before the show. All our celebrities have to do is come up with the answers none of those 100 people could think of. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, I'm Liz Pichon and I'm an illustrator and I write children's books about a character called Tom Gates and I usually sit in a shed and do them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Pam Ayres. I write funny poems and I have done for a considerable length of time. <laughs> Cover number two. Uh, I'm Quentin Letts. I'm a parliamentary sketchwriter, theatre critic, novelist and general pie chucker. Hello, I'm Yasmin Alibi Brown. I'm a columnist, author, and national nuisance. Couple number three. Hello, I'm Jill Mansell, and I'm a novelist. Hello, I'm Jimmy McGovern, and I'm a writer. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Mark Watson. I'm a stand-up comedian, author, and I'm the sort of person I pop up on these shows and people say, oh, it's David Baddiel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Owen Jones. As well as being a lost-looking schoolboy, I'm a Guardian columnist and author. Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. We'll have a chance to chat to each of you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce, a man of many letters. I saw how much alphabetty spaghetti he had before the show. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening. I'll tell you what, whenever we do a writer's special, we might as well say clever people special. Don't you think? Yes. There's a huge amount of intellect up there. I'm looking at you, Jimmy McGovern. <laughs> Uh, but have what some there were some proper legends on the show. Pam Ayres is yeah, on the show. I know. Jimmy McGovern is on I the know. show. What an absolute hero. Also, Mark Watson. Now, Mark Watson has got a pointless trophy. He's already won one. He's a pointless ledge. Almost impossible to beat, I would say. <laughs> unless Owen Jones mucks up. I don't know, Owen, it's a I lot of pressure on you. I'm right down, I can promise a you. A lot of pressure on you. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great fun. I would say uh, round two, round two is going to be a perfect round for everybody here. Oh, Well, nice. not for everybody, because no. two of you won't see it and two of you will be knocked out <laughs> in it. But you should all do well on round two. Good. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, as usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. All our celebrities have to do here is find those all-important, pointless answers. These are answers that none of our 100 people gave. Find one of those, and we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, and each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity, we're going to start off with an enhanced jackpot of £2,500. There it is. <laughs> Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. So all you have to remember is this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. That is it. Uh, best of luck. Our first category this evening is... Comedy. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..stand-up comedians. Richard. Yeah, on each board, we're going to show you seven descriptions of famous people who've made a living in stand-up. You just need to tell us who they are, please. Uh, we're going to give you their initials as well. Seven on the first board, seven on the second, 14 and all to have a go at at home. Very best of luck. OK, let's have a look at our first board of seven stand-ups, and here they are. We've got... Has hosted TV shows Mock the Week and The Apprentice You're Fired, D.O.B. Saturday Night Live alumnus, voices Matty the Zebra in Madagascar Films, C.R. Played singer-turned-nun Dolores in Sister Act Films, W.G. Welsh host of Work Experience and 2014 series of Nevermind the Buzzcocks, R.G. Phoenix Knights and Carshare, actor and writer, half of Max and Paddy, P.K. Former Britain's Got Talent judge, also hosted TV show Comedy Roadshow, M.M. And Irish-born shows include Pedantic and Whimsical and Different Class, E.B. Let me read those again. 
has hosted TV shows Mock the Week and The Apprentice, You're Fired, DOB. Saturday Night Live alumnus voices Marty the Zebra in Madagascar films, CR. Played singer turned nun, Dolores in Sister Act films, WG. Welsh host of Work Experience and 2014 series Nevermind the Buzzcocks, RG. Phoenix Knights and Karsha, actor and writer, half of Max and Paddy, PK. Former Britain's Got Talent judge also hosted TV show Comedy Roadshow, MM. And Irish-born shows include Pedantic and Whimsical and a different class, EB. Uh, Pam, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Lovely Alexander. to have you here. Thank you. You have been in the Sunday Times bestseller list every decade since the 70s. Um, well, yes, thank you. I have. I cannot deny it. You can't, but either you have an incredibly loyal readership <laughs> or you're brilliant at just finding new ways of bringing in a new audience all the time. Well, which of those? Or maybe a bit of both? I try and write about things that people identify with, you know, I try and write about the kind of things that people will say, yes, I felt like that as well. But, so I think if I've got a strength, that's what it is. So I try and pick on subjects that aren't too rarefied, that mm. people will think, yeah, I've felt like that myself. Mm, I found a chord being struck. Yes, mm, yes. By your pen. One of the most popular ones I've written recently is a piece called They Should Have Asked My Husband. <laughs> and this, strangely enough, does seem to strike a chord with people. It's about the husband who knows everything. It's not about my husband, of course. <laughs> now, Pam, uh, there is our board of stand-ups. Do you like this board? Is it all right? No, I, I don't like it at all. No, I don't like it at all. I'm paralysed with fear. OK, I'm going to go for Whoopi Goldberg in uh, The Singer Turned Nun. OK, Whoopi that... Goldberg yes. says, Pam, you're getting a nod from Liz. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Whoopi Goldberg. It's right. Yeah. 70. Not bad. <laughs> it's not bad, Pam. 70. Gets us off to a good start. Yeah, it's one of the very few people who've got an EGOT award, which is an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony, Whoopi Goldberg. Very good. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Pleasure. Richard. Uh, there we are. Quentin, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Jolly good to be here. So, by day, a parliamentary sketch writer, and then by night, off to the theatre. And which of the two seats you sit in, which, uh, which are the comfier ones? Well, they both involve forms of terrible ham acting. It's, uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a strange double existence. Yeah, it must be. I mean, how that, I mean, I feel sorry for whoever it is who's putting on a first night that you have to go to. You just sat through seven hours of transport bill <laughs> and then you have to turn up and, and review yeah, that. Because I, mean, I arrived so relieved to have got away from the politicians that there so I am prepared to be hours of entertained. Sleep. Yeah, well, that's good. Very good. Uh, now, Quentin. Stand-ups. I've got it. I've, I, I know one at the top one, I think I know, but I'm not going to say that because I think that's too obvious. So I'm going to go for number four the RG, and I may be completely wrong here, but I think that may be Rod with an H. Rod Gilbert. Rod Gilbert. OK, Quentin, you're doing such a good actor, pretending I don't really know, but actually you know exactly how to no. spell Rod. Um, <laughs> let's see how many of our 100 people said Rod Gilbert. It is Rod Gilbert, by the way. Oh. Uh, yep, there it goes. Down it goes, that's a good answer. Oh, 16, for goodness sake. Quentin. Well done. Very well played, Quentin. Yeah, terrific answer. Terrific stand-up as well, Rod Gilbert. Mm. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, Jimmy, let's talk about... Well, let's talk about lots of things. Brookside was where you started out. 82. Uh, and you were right at the yeah. very beginning of Brookside. I was there before the houses, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you and Phil Redmond just pacing around in a yeah. port cabin. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did that work? I mean, was there a team of writers there? Was it just you? Was yeah, it... at first there were about four of us, but then as it went on, we got more and more. I think we ended up with a team of about 14 in the right. end. It's, it's just a monster. Just a monster. Churning out, churning out, out and eat, eating up story. But what yeah. fun, though. Yeah. What fun, just spinning the story just yes. ahead of the, yeah. ahead of the, yeah. the, the cameras. Uh, and then where did Cracker come from? That was your first big break, wasn't it? Yeah. It was funny, cos uh, up here he was a wiry, thin man, and I said to our producer, a very wiry, thin man, a bit like John Cassavetes, he goes, <laughs> Robbie Coltrane. You said, <laughs> yes! That's exactly what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. And what are you up to at the moment? You're writing on a, working on a new uh, thing, aren't you? I'm actually writing a thing... Yeah, it, it's a thing about a Catholic priest starring Sean Bean. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic about that. You know, Everything about that sounds good. Fantastic, Sean. Fantastic. Uh, Jimmy, what would you like to go for from our stand-up? Well, here? it's not for me, this. I was hoping for Arthur Askey and things like that. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, the, the one you turned down, Quentin, uh, the top one, Daryl O'Brien. Dara O'Brien says, Jimmy, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people say Dara O'Brien or O'Brien. It's right. 70 is our high score, and you pass that. 
50. There we are. Nice halfway house, Jimmy. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, very well played, Jimmy. Uh, another good answer and a, a wonderful comic, wonderful host as well. He's a terrific Isn't TV he's host. Brilliant. He's very, very good mm. on uh, on Knock the Week. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, now, Mark, welcome back to Pointless. Thank you. Mark, you have written, I think, eight novels. Uh, Is that it's, right? It's something like that. I think, I think it's six eight. plus a graphic novel, so seven. So seven, and there's an eighth on the way. And there, are, there is an eighth on the there's way, always... so I suppose you're right. Yeah. yeah. But you're, and you also tour a lot. I mean, you seem always to be on tour, Mark. Yes, it's true. I, I mean, I've, well, this tour is 85 shows long, and for example. Long. And um, plus Edinburgh Festival was about, so more than 100 shows, yeah, I that's suppose. Yeah, a lot yeah. of shows. And then when you're supposed to have a day off, the pointless call comes and you can't really turn you it down. turn it down. Even no. though it's, it's, I thought that having been on it before would mean it was less nerve-wracking, but it, it, this last time I thought I'd get some glory for uh, getting the trophy, but all anybody said was, why did you scratch your head so much? Why did you scratch your beard? So this time I'm going to look less nervous, and even if we lose, at least I'll still have more dignity. <laughs> Mark, what would you like to go for? This board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through it and fill in all the blanks? Well, Peter Kay is the car shout, of course. Uh, Michael McIntyre, but those seem kind of too well known. Uh, I, now, I think that the bottom one is, is Ed Byrne, but I, I'm not 100% sure. I assume that the Saturday Night Live alumnus is Chris Rock, but I'm also not sure about that, and I wouldn't have a clue that he was the voice of that zebra. Fairly confident the bottom one is Ed Byrne, so I'm going to say Ed Byrne. Ed Byrne, says Mark. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ed Byrne. It is Ed Byrne. Oof. Well done, Mark. Well, our low score at the moment is 16. Ed Byrne whizzes past 16 to 13. There we are. Very well done, indeed. Yeah. Best score of the pass. Yeah. Very well played, Mark. Yeah, although you did follow uh, saying, I'm very confident it's Ed Byrne with immediately scratching your beard for about 15 <laughs> seconds. It's, I'm afraid it's a compulsion. So it's, it's not fixable. Uh, yeah, Ed Byrne. Ed Byrne was Dara O'Brien's best man, and Dara O'Brien was Ed Byrne's best man. That's nice, isn't that it? Is nice. That is nice. That is very nice. And it is the, uh, it's the best answer on that board, because you, uh, you're right about Chris Rock. Would have scored you a few more points, though. He would have scored you 21. You are right about Peter Kay, of course. Phoenix Knights and Car Share would have scored you 56. And you're also right about Michael McIntyre. And he would have scored you 33. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. 13, well done, Mark. That was the best score of that pass. 16 is where we find uh, Quentin and Yasmin. Then 50, Jimmy and Jill. 70s, where we find Pam and Liz. You're not way ahead, but you're a little bit ahead. So, Liz, we need something from the Ed Byrne end of the next okay. board from you. Uh, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues to stand-ups up on the board, and here they come. We've got created and acted in The Office Extras and Derek, RG, Scottish actor who played John Brown in the 1997 film Mrs Brown, BC, New York-born host of E! Entertainment TV show Fashion Police from 2002, JR, completed 27 marathons in 27 days for sport relief in 2016, EI, acted in film There's Something About Mary, shows include Big and XL, LE, played Manny in sitcom Black Books, stand-up shows include Part Troll, BB, and co-created TV comedy Getting On, also playing Nurse Kim Wilde in the show, JB. B. Let me read those again. Created and acted in The Office, Extras and Derek R.G., Scottish actor who played John Brown in the 1997 film Mrs Brown, B.C., New York-born host of E! Entertainment TV show Fashion Police from 2002, J.R., completed 27 marathons in 27 days for sport relief in 2016, E.I., Acted in film There's Something About Mary, shows include Big and XL, L.E., played Manny in sitcom Black Books, stand-up shows include Part Troll, B.B., and co-created TV comedy Getting On, also playing Nurse Kim Wilde in the show, J.B. Owen... Welcome Ooh. to Pointless. Don't worry. Owen, my life fine. is flashing through fine. my eyes. It's fine. No, it's we'll good. We'll get together. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Now, Owen, right. by the way, you're looking very, very smart, can I say? That's quite smart for me. That's yes. genuinely quite smart. You look very smart. And Thank I, you. I was reading somewhere about the first time you appeared on Question Time, apparently you turned up in someone's blouse. It was an accident. There's a rational explanation <laughs> for this. Yes. Well, I was what? very nervous. What? Question Time, by the way, is nowhere near as scary as this show. This is a horror really? show. Really? Why did I agree to do this? My life is honestly is horrendous. But I, I, I asked, you know, I want to look dapper. You want to look dapper on Question Time. We've been on Question Time. You want to make a good impression. So I asked my mate, can I borrow your shirt? And he said, yeah, that's fine. And put it on, thought I looked quite, you know, pretty dapper. And then uh, it turned out I took his girlfriend's blouse. <laughs> that's where you were. Which uh, didn't trend. Owen Jones is wearing a blouse. Didn't Did trend the pie crust it. collar not give it away? What was the, <laughs> what's the thing? Uh, now, when you're writing, are you a deadline writer? Are you, when you write a column, for example, do you find it's just bursting to get out of you and you long to sit down and write it? No, it's uh, writing. I don't know. It's, it's just I do it to try and get points across and try and make raise things I believe in. But I, I, so it's like pulling teeth. 
Really? That's interesting. So you, you, you are a deadline, right? Without the deadline, it just really wouldn't happen. No, no, I would, I would just be watching pointless back episodes, which is what I did this week uh, as a panic binge. <laughs> Excellent. Well, right, into the panic now. Oh, and there you are on 13. Ideally, you'd score 56 or less. Right. With this answer. What okay, are well, you going to go for? Because I'm standing next to such a hero, he's blitzed it. I'm just going to play it safe. So I know two of them for definite, and it's just between... I'll go for Eddie Izzard's 27 marathons. Obvious, everyone would have said it. It'll be like 98. Let's find out. Here is your red line. If you can get below this red line here with Eddie Izzard, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many people said it. Ding. <laughs> it's right. 69. Not bad at all. Takes your total up to 82. Yeah, it's born in uh, the Yemen, Eddie Izzard, then moved to Northern Ireland, then Wales, then Sussex. It's well travelled, isn't it? It is. He ran all the way. All yes. Way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Jill. I read something lovely about you, which is that you write all your books in fountain pen. Yes. In long hand. By hand, yeah. That's nice. I know. What I'm colour? Like a dinosaur. What colour? No, no. I think I can. I can sort of understand that. What colour ink do you use? All sorts. Okay. Purple with a gold shimmer in. That's my favourite at the moment. With a gold shimmer. With a gold shimmer. Yes. That's nice. Uh, but what happens if you turn up one morning and they open the door and there's the cat? <laughs> well, sort of the we remains of chapter seven. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. But um, or, or a fire or something like that. So you're not worried about? <laughs> yeah. He's well, a good question. Isn't he? Yeah. Don't I know forget... something could happen. I know yeah, somebody don't lost it. If there's a fire, or, uh, computers also catch light. I know. Sometimes a writer's going, "Oh my goodness, my computer's just died, and I've lost sixteen chapters of the latest oh, book." Oh no! So and I sort of sit there uh. going, <laughs> 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 smugly with my fountain uh. pen. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, now, Jill, there you are on 50. The high scorers at the moment are Owen and Mark behind you on 82. So 31 or less keeps you in the game. I'm a bit torn. Um, but I am going to go for number three, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers says, Jill, that got you a little bit of a ooh from the, the audience, which great. is exciting. There is your red line. Let's see if you get below that with Joan Rivers. It is Joan Rivers. I have a good feeling about this. Yes, I was right, too. Down it goes. Very well done, indeed. Seven. <laughs> Which I think I'm actually saying is the lowest score of the whole round so far. So very well done, indeed, Jill. 57 is your total. Three, you go to round two. Well played, Jill. It's a terrific answer, yeah. Or was it lovely to have Joan Rivers mentioned as well, the late Joan Rivers. She had a collection, a Fabergé collection, which was worth over $2 million. Wow. Wow. There you go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Yasmin, welcome to Pointless. I always think being a political journalist is something... It's just so difficult. Your job is to state your opinion as clearly as you possibly can. There's nowhere to hide once you put your opinion out there. And a lot of people are rather bad at accommodating other people's opinions. So presumably you get quite a lot of feedback. I think I must be very thick-skinned. I must be like an elephant. It doesn't... I mean, it of course hurts. Yeah. But all these years on, all these years on, you know... I'm still here. <laughs> still here. You know. But when you start out, I mean, there is a proper... There's a real Rubicon you cross. You don't think, actually, do you know what? I know I'm going to wade over there and I'm just going <laughs> to say what I think. But I never say anything I don't mean. Yeah. I don't sit around trying to upset my mother-in-law. I really don't. <laughs> you just something I do. just upset her. But, <laughs> but honestly, they're genuinely held opinions and sometimes yes. I change my mind and I say so. Yeah. I couldn't do yeah. anything else. I love the buzz. It's, it's almost... Um, Erotic. I mean, it's fantastic. There we are. <laughs> we finally get finally. there. Finally. Come on, that's why we're all writers. <laughs> Look at what. Uh, Yasmin, what would you like to go for on this board? Your, your target, by the way, is 65. 65 or less, and you're through. OK, I know two or three of them, and I, I'm going to go for the second one, which is Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, says Yasmin. Here is your red line. If you can get below this red line with Billy Connolly, you are through to the next round. How many of our 100 people said it? Well done. You have done it. 50. 50 for Billy Connolly. Takes your total up to 66. Yeah, I suspect you'd have scored a few more, but the, the clue itself is slightly more cryptic, maybe, than some of them. Scottish actor. Lovely Billy Connolly. Yeah. Just a brilliant man. Thank you. Um, so, Liz. Hello. Now, your story is a lovely story because oh, you, you've you. designed all sorts of things for other people. I you've have, done yeah. album covers and all sorts of things like that. It's my only proper job I've ever had. Album cover <laughs> designer. Because writing and illustrating, you know, I have too much fun now. But so. then you were an illustrator, and then Tom Gates. That's right. And it's yeah. just gone. 
It's massive. Oh, I've had a massive sort of career change over the last four or five years. Yeah. So I've done picture books before. So I used to illustrate for other people. Yes. So I used to illustrate other people's books. And then I thought, actually, do you know what? I I'd really this. like to sort of illustrate funny books. I wanted to sort of make books that I thought when I was that age that I'd really like. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now, as well as lots of other things, too. Good stuff. Well, good for you. Uh, now, Liz, we oh, need an answer forgot. from you. Now, this, yes, there is a bit of pressure on you here. We need a score of 11 oh, or less, Liz. Oh, 11? So, created uh, in the office. So, that's Ricky Gervais. Played um, Manny in the sitcom, Black Books. That's, I think that's Bill, Bill Bailey, I think. Um, and the last one, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go to the last one, which is the co-created TV comedy, because um, I love that show as well, and that's Joe Brand. Joe Brand, says Liz. Let's see, here is your red line. If you can get below that with Joe Brand, you are through to the next round. Oh, this is exciting. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Joe Brand. It's right. Still going down. Oh, no, 18! It's a great answer, but I'm afraid it's just going to take you over the line. 88 is your total. Yeah, that's uh, it's unlucky. That was very, very close. That was so close that you should have seen how much Mark was scratching his beard. It was quite something. <laughs> it was almost quite, all came off. It, it almost, almost all came off. Um, let's fit in the rest of these, shall we? Um, you're absolutely right about Bill Bailey. Uh, you chose the right one with Joe Brown. He would have scored slightly more points, would have scored you 21. You're right with Ricky Gervais as well, up the top there. He would have scored you 54. And do you know this last one? Lee Evans. Lee Evans, yeah. And he would have scored 15 points. There we are. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so we are at the end of our first round. The pair we have to say goodbye to with our high score. It's not that high a score. <laughs> um, but Liz and Pam, I'm afraid, sorry, it is you. Sorry. It's been but also, lovely. I heard something about biscuits at one point earlier oh, as well. Yes. I was talking about biscuits. Yes. yes. Liz, Hang you on. made some biscuits. <laughs> I should stick to doing this more. So oh. when I, I draw on a lot of things. So, so I draw did nails, but so I thought I'd do. I've got special. Um, like that, there you go. Like Who that. wouldn't want to eat that? I know. Exactly. <laughs> I like the I like the and rye yeah, eyebrow. Oh, there we go. And the other one, like. Oh, oh there he is. Yeah. Lovely. So you done you done biscuits with me and Wayne Rooney on. <laughs> That's really. Uh... <laughs> So That's maybe I should great. stick to doing that then. Oh, <laughs> oh, she's putting them away. I'm putting I them away. Gonna... Don't worry, I love it. Um, thank you so much. Liz and Pam, it's been such a treat to have you here. Thank you so much for playing. Liz and Pam! Right, for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now we're down to three pairs. It gets a little bit harder, and obviously at the end of this round, we'll have to say goodbye to another of our pairs. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs, though, and well done for making it through round one. Our category for round two today is... Words. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a giveaway. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words that begin with S and end with W as they could. Richard. Mm, that's the look of six writers panicking right there. <laughs> We're looking for any word which has its own entry in the British and World English section of OxfordDictionaries.com. Please, that starts with an S and ends in a W. As always, no hyphenated words, no proper nouns, anything like that. Um, OK, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Quentin. I've gone a bit of a blank. The only thing I can think of is slew, S-L-E-W, which is the past tense of slay. Slew. So you can have a slew of things, can't they, you? They well. slew their enemy. Oh, that's true, yes, slew. Anyway, slew. Let's see how many of our 100 people said slew. <laughs> Not bad at all, 27. <laughs> slew, 27. Yeah, slew, 27, and absolutely means what uh, the both of you have already described, so I have nothing to say. Slew. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Jimmy. Well, that was mine, believe it or not. Uh, I'll take South Paul. Oh. 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 Is it, is it that That's or? good. South Paul. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said South Paul. It's right. Southport. There we go, Jimmy. Very well done indeed. Southport. 
That's a great answer, Jimmy. Very well played. Yeah, a left-handed boxer, or a left-handed boxer that leads with his right is, uh, is a southpaw. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Owen. Right. Let's do this. That's, this. That's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not my word. <laughs> Sideshow. What? <Whoa. gasps> Sideshow. Sideshow. Says Owen. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sideshow. Sideshow. Very well done indeed. These are all good answers. This is terrific stuff, isn't it? Um, a lot of pressure on the people coming back. <laughs> Southpaw and Sideshow. I know. South Southpaw South South and Sideshow are both, so, both sound like sidekicks. No, that's true. But a double act with two sidekicks is, is, uh, is something good. to think about. Yeah. Thank you very much, dear. We're halfway through the round, so let's have a quick look at those scores. Two is the best score of that pass. Very well done, Jimmy. Jimmy and Jill looking very strong. As I have to say, are Owen and Mark less so, Quentin and Yasmin. Yeah. But uh, Quentin and Yasmin, I'm afraid you are a little bit ahead, so Yasmin, we need a low score from you. So uh, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> so, Mark, remember it's words beginning with S, ending with W. Ah. Uh. I think I'm going to say sallow. That's a word, isn't it? I hope so. The uh, sallow. Word, <laughs> Meaning sort of Sa pale or sickly looking, I think. There is your red line, Mark. Let's see how many of our 100 people said sallow. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Good enough. 14 takes your total up to 80. Yeah, well played, as you say, it's a pale or sickly looking. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jill, <laughs> your target is 24 or less. OK. Um, well, sometimes when I'm at home writing and I'm not seeing anyone that day and I'm not dressed terribly well, I might look like a bit of a scarecrow. A scarecrow? Oh, look at that. Everyone likes scarecrow. Uh, here's your red line. Get below that with scarecrow. You are through. It's right. Very well done. Look at that, 95. That's a great answer. Yeah. Seven. I honestly think that future historians will play this to students to say, this is how you do a words round on point. List. <laughs> I mean, I thought SLU was good and it's been far and away the biggest scorer. It's been mm. amazing, it's been brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, Yasmin, I'm sorry to say you're the high scorers. No. Even mm. before you've given your answer, which I know is worth waiting for. OK. There's a risk with the one I know. Um, sinew. Sinew, says Yasmin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said sinew. There's no red line for you, I'm afraid, as you're the high scorers. Eleven for Sinew takes your total up to 38. Yeah, it's a very good answer, but we'll be Sinew later, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, let's take a look at some of the pointless answers now. Salco, which uh, they have in uh, figure skating, triple Salco and so on, would have been a very good answer. Schoolfellow, that's rather nice, isn't it? And Scrimshaw. Cero uh, Sky Glow, which is the glow of the sky. Stream Flow, which is the flow of a stream. Uh, the liquid through a stream. Sunbow, which is kind of like a rainbow, but uh, uh, the sun is involved somehow in a way that I don't have time to go into uh, or <laughs> understand. Uh, sundew, which is a little plant, and superflow, which is about um, superfluids. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our second round, and I'm very sorry to say, Yasmin and Quentin, we have to say goodbye to you with your high score of 38. Uh, it's been great having you here. Thank you Thanks for playing. Much. Please come and play again. But meantime, thank you so much. Yasmin and Quentin, wonderful. <laughs> But for Owen and Mark, Jimmy and Jill, it's now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Jimmy and Jill, Owen and Mark. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> so, this is the bit where we have to decide who goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head to head. But the big difference is you're now allowed to confer, which is nice. You can chat before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Very best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head to head. Yeah. 
Here is your first question, and it concerns films by prop or costume. <laughs> Richard. I'm going to show you five pictures now of props or costumes from various films, but can you tell us which films they first appeared in, please? Let's find out uh, what our props and costumes look like. Here they come. We've got five of them, and we have... A... B... C... D... And... E. There we are. Five props or costumes from films. Jimmy and Jill, you're our low scorer, so you'll go first. Oh, no. I don't know. Mm. Is, is a Tom Hanks um, uh, wig? Is it big? I don't know. We think it is Bridget Jones' diary. OK, E, Bridget Jones, say Jimmy and Jill. Now, Owen and Mark, do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? So, A is Mr Big. That is right, isn't it? Or was it just I, called Big? I, I think it might have just been called Big. It, it is it, just Big, isn't it? It could be. It's the Tom Hanks film. C's V for Vendetta. Which do you think is more obscure? Because that's the Philip Pullman thing, but I've forgotten the name. I should say that's that's got to be more obscure than Bridget Jones in, in to the general public. Yeah, I'd say so. So yeah, should we so, go for C? So let's go for that. Yeah. V for Vendetta, C. So we have Bridget Jones for E and V for Vendetta for C. Uh, Jimmy and Jill said Bridget Jones' diary. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bridget Jones. It's right. 55 for Bridget Jones. <laughs> Owen and Mark, meanwhile, have gone for C and said V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Well chosen, wins oh, you the oh, point. Oh, down oh, it goes. Still going down. 19 for V for Vendetta. Very well done indeed, Owen and Mark. After one question, you are up 1-0. Yeah, very well played. Made very famous now, that mask. Uh, worn at all sorts of anti-establishment protests around the world, the Viva Vendetta mask, but that's where it's from originally. A, you were right, was big. Also would have won you the points, because uh, it would have scored 45. B, it is a Philip Pullman book, and a picture of the Golden Compass there comes from the Golden Compass. <laughs> that's the title. <laughs> how, how are we meant to get that? That would have scored you 12. <laughs> I know, right? It's, uh, there it is. 12 for that. And D, of course, is The Wizard of Oz. And that would have scored you 69 points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, here comes your second question. Jimmy and Jill, Owen and Mark will answer this one first. But you have to win this one to stay in the game, so good luck with that. Our second question today is all about numerical songs. Numerical songs, Richard. Yep, going to play you five excerpts from UK Top 40 hits now, and they've all got a number in their title. But we're looking for the name of the band or artist who recorded each of these, please. OK, let's have a listen to our songs. We have five of them, and here is the first. A. Rise up this morning. Here's B. Here's C. OK, and here's D. There are nine million bicycles in Beijing. That's a fact. It's a thing we can't deny. Like the fact that I will love you till I die. And here is E. Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's heavering to you. But I Now, um, Owen and Mark, 
what would you like to go for? We're going to go for Blur, B being Blur. B Blur, B Blur, say Owen and Mark. Now, Jimmy and Jill. We're going to go for, I've forgotten which one it was, I think it was C, Taylor Swift. C, Taylor Swift. So we had B Blur and we had C, Taylor Swift. Um, Owen and Mark went for B Blur. Let's see if that's right, Blur. How many of our 100 people said it? It's right. Wow. Blur, look at that, down to 20. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Jimmy and Jill have gone for Taylor Swift for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Taylor Swift. It's right, it is Taylor Swift. Blur on 20, Taylor Swift. Passes it. Exactly what we needed. Very well done indeed, Jimmy and Jill. You're back in the game after two questions, it's one all. Yeah, yeah very well done. I think that was Jill who got that one. It's a terrific oh. answer. Well done. <laughs> let's fill in the rest of these. Uh, let's have a tiny listen to A. There's, of course, Bob Marley. Bob Marley, Bob Marley and the Whalers. Would have scored you 50. Uh, D. Katie Melua. It's Katie Melua. Yeah, and that would have scored you 14. And the final one, very famous song, didn't score that many points. Proclaimers. Proclaimers, 12 points for that. 12. There we are, thank you very much indeed. Richard, um, so it all comes down to our third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot for their charities. Very best of luck to both pairs. Our third question this evening is all about... Things with animals in their names. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five clues now to things that have animals in their names but are not animals. <gasps> uh, we'll also give you the initials of what the things are. OK, let's reveal our five clues. Here they come. We have got gymnastic apparatus British athlete Louis Smith has won three Olympic medals on PH. Ultra wide angle camera attachment that produces a panoramic or distorted image, FL. Expression that describes superficial sympathy or a false display of grief, CT. Road feature designed to allow cyclists and pedestrians to safely cross a road at the same time, TC. Long platform on which models walk at fashion shows to demonstrate clothing, C. I shall read those again. Gymnastic apparatus British athlete Louis Smith has won three Olympic medals on PH. Ultra wide angle camera attachment that produces a panoramic or distorted image, FL. Expression that describes superficial sympathy or a false display of grief, CT. Road feature designed to allow cyclists and pedestrians to safely cross a road at the same time, TC. And long platform on which models walk at fashion shows to demonstrate clothing, C. Jimmy and Jill, we come to you first. Oh, that's probably the best yeah. one of the three we know. Go for that. OK, we are going to go for the first one, Pommel Horse. Pommel Horse, say Jimmy and Jill. Pommel Horse. Now then, Owen and Mark, there we are, the gauntlet's been thrown down. Pommel Horse. Talk us through the rest of that board. Uh, toucan Crossing, is that...? I'm just stuck with that, because I just thought Zebra Crossing, I thought it was a type. I think maybe Toucan Crossing is a thing. OK. But then this second one could be... Is fish Eye Lens, is that a thing? Fish, fish Eye I mean, the fish bit checks out, or the whether a fish is an animal is a different... Oh. Against, <laughs> <laughs> I believe fish eye lens is a phrase. Let's go. For We're it. doing it. <laughs> okay, fish eye lens it is. Yeah. So we have pommel horse, we have fish eye lens. <sighs> Jimmy and Jill went for pommel horse. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pommel horse. When it's right. Still going down. Down goes 39 for pommel horse. Ooh. I might have hoped that would go a little bit further down there, I yeah, thought. I anyway, 39 it is. So, Owen and Mark, that's where you have to beat with fisheye lens if it's a thing. Let's see how many of our 100 people said fisheye lens. Huh? It's a thing! Oh. Wow! But is it a good enough one? And it beats Pommel Horse, look at that, down it goes. Very well done indeed, down to 14. Fabulous! <laughs> that means, after three questions, Owen and Mark, you are through to the final 2-1. Yeah, it's a terrific head-to-head, -head. both teams very well played and a, a great finish to it. Um, Crocodile Tears was a big scorer, certainly bigger than, uh, than Pommel Horse. It would have scored you 45. Uh, and Catwalk is the biggest scorer of all and would have scored you 80. And the road feature... It is a toucan. It is a toucan it? crossing, yeah, as in two can cross. That's, uh, that's where it comes, that's where it comes yeah. from. Wow. Toucan crossing, 10 points for that. Very well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, our low scorers, Jimmy and Jill. Oh, you just came up against the immovable object that is Owen and Mark in the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid. What a great show. It's been lovely having you here. Thank you so much. Jimmy and Jill, wonderful. Thank you.
Your pleasure. Third draw, Owen and Mark. It's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Owen. Congratulations, Mark. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, anything you'd like to see come up in this last round? We think politics, hopefully, for me, just because that's my job, isn't it? If I don't know anything Surely. about that, why am I? In a way, I'd well, like that to come it. up, because then I'll just sort of go for a walk and you can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, well, four things will arrive on the board behind me. Let's hope something there suits you. Today's selection looks like this. Musicals based on Shakespeare, Europe, Star Trek on film, the band Queen. Well, can we have four more? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Europe. I, I think it's Europe. Both of us tentatively think Europe. Yeah. Queen for this song, I could just do a bit of Queen. Start doing Star, Star Trek. Trek. Musicals based on yeah. Shakespeare feels dangerous. Yeah. No, we'll get this up Europe. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Europe. Europe it is. OK, very best of luck, gents. You've seen off three very strong teams uh, today. Let's hope you can take that final step as well. Here are your three options. I hope at least one of these suits you. We're looking for the name of any European monarch. That's anyone who's a reigning head of state of a European nation uh, as of August 2016. We are looking for any of the nine cities that were declared European capitals of culture in 2000. There was a special kind of slew slew of, uh, of capitals of culture in 2000, or we're looking for the capital of any EU member state that uses the euro. So European monarchs, European capitals of culture 2000, and capitals of euro using countries. Very best of luck. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Ish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah ish. OK, well, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Okay, monarchs. Let's discard. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah. Um, capitals that use euro. Okay, right. Where uses the euro is my question. Well, so, I don't know, loads of like Warsaw. That's one. Warsaw is Vilnius. Is that? Is Vilnius? Is is Latvia. Latvia. Do, do the, the Baltic states do they? You've got they... Latvia is Riga, Vilnius, Lithuania. Are they? Do they? Use I the don't euro? know. That's the problem. That's the problem <laughs> we're facing, isn't it? Where uh, else uses the euro? Uh, Where do we know uses the euro? But it's an unusual one. Oh, give me someone. I'll, uh, I'll do it. Lisbon, obviously. Lisbon. But everyone's going to know that, aren't they? Yeah. What other countries? Um, use, what are the most obscure countries that use the euro? Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Liechtenstein? Is Liechtenstein? I don't I think that's... that's part of the Euro. No. Barely. Barely. Places are... Um, <laughs> sorry, no offence, sorry. It's, uh, um, it's the embassy. But let's, OK, um, Belgium... Well, Belgium's too easy, but most of the capitals of the countries we know are too easy is the problem. We need a weird country that also uh, uses the Euro. Right. We're running out of time, by the way. We are, we are. Uh, Ten seconds. Ten seconds I feel we've left. used our time pretty well so far. Um, <laughs> We'll just, we'll, we'll, just we'll just get three of those out. Just three, just see what happens. Three, yeah. yeah. Uh, so three, we're going to go for three countries and hope that one of them uses the euro. Yes. OK, there we are. Let's have your three answers now. And if you could say which category you're answering, that would be great. So we're going to go all for capitals of countries that use the euro. OK, and? So, should we take a, take a shot at one that is yeah. one of those? Like, for example, Vilnius. Vilnius. Uh, Vilnius, OK, Good. we're going to hope Lithuania uses the euro and say Vilnius. Warsaw. Warsaw. Yeah, That's stupid, you that, never should do that, should I? Um, you have now, though. Yeah. And then, do you reckon Romania? No, Romania's probably not stable. No, definitely not. Hungary? Be Budapest. 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 And Budapest. Budapest. All right, well, okay, Budapest. Budapest. there we are. Three answers. Vilnius, Warsaw and Budapest. Now, yes. of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? If Vilnius is part... If Lithuania's part of the Should Euro, we put Vilnius last? Y yeah. Shall we? Yeah. That's yeah. a death or glory answer. OK, yeah. there we yeah. are. Yes, Vilnius goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Warsaw, Wars I'd, I'd be surprised Warsaw, if, everyone if people... Warsaw, yeah. So Warsaw, Budapest, Vilnius yeah. in that order. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Warsaw, Budapest, Vilnius. Well, very best of luck. Three good answers on the board there. If one of these turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for your charities, which charities are you playing for? Owen, you first. So uh, Reclaim Project, that trains up young working-class people to have leadership skills and go out and do stuff in their communities. Very good. Mark? Uh, mine is the Moldova Project, which is a small charity that is run by my twin sisters. And uh, it does uh, development work in very poor communities in Moldova, which is one of the poorest countries in Europe. And now I think about it, if that's one of the answers, <laughs> I'll be absolutely <laughs> serious. Very, <annoying. laughs> very good indeed. Two wonderful charities there. <laughs> Let's hope one of these answers is pointless. Awful. And we'll win <laughs> that jackpot for your charities. Uh, your first answer was Warsaw. 
This is the one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless. Only one of these has to be pointless for you to win the jackpot, though. So let's find out how many of our 100 people named Warsaw as a Eurozone capital. How many of our 100 people said it? Is it pointless for £2,500? No, ah, it's not, oh, even it's not in the euro. euro. This was the worry. Oh, I, I, no, I should know that. I should know that. No, should know that. Yeah, you should. That's my job. Okay, <laughs> right. Well, that means that <laughs> not a pointless oh, answer. What if the, what if I all think of all of them are. Now. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> let's move on to the next answer. Budapest. You have gone for Budapest again. We're looking for capitals in the eurozone. I don't think it's in the eurozone. If euro it's pointless, yeah. it wins you two thousand five hundred pounds for your charity. <laughs> How many of our one hundred people said Budapest? It's not going to be. Oh, no, no. Bad luck. And that one's not going to be out. No, well, then Vilnius definitely won't be. I don't know where the... I know the capitals of the countries, but I don't know okay. which ones are. Your capitals are brilliant, but let's <laughs> find out how many of it's these... Not, it's definitely oh. not. Vilnius, let's find out how many of our 100 people said Vilnius as a capital within the Eurozone. <laughs> 2,500 yes, Stop saying pounds. that, will you? <laughs> let's find out if it's pointless. <laughs> Vilnius. It's not. It is. Oh. What? <laughs> Vilnius is right. Uh, Walter was incorrect. Budapest was incorrect. <laughs> Vilnius absolutely on the money. Down it goes through the teens. Into single figures. Still going down. Vilnius takes us down right the way down. Oh, oh, yes! <laughs> Listen, that's a great answer. Two is a brilliant score. Uh, irritatingly, we only accept pointless answers in this last round, but would have won that jackpot for you. However, as it is a charity show, and all our celebrity pairs are playing for charities, we are going to donate £500 to each charity pair for their oh, respective charities. So there you are. And uh, you get a pointless trophy to take home as well, so don't worry. Very well done. Yeah, that's unlucky in that 60 seconds as well. We're asking you about three different things at once there with the capitals and the EU. Um, yeah, Poland uses the Slotti uh, and Hungary uses the Forint. There's only two pointless answers in that category, which we will get to. Now, I know you talked about your sister working in Moldova. Uh, two sisters, in fact. Yeah, they're, they are twins. Uh, and the, the, uh, the capital of Moldova is... Uh, Kishnau. Yeah, Kishnau. Is, is, is that one of them? No, it's not. That's the good news. I would have just had to go home without saying anything yeah, else. Yeah, they are not in the EU. You'll be glad to hear. <laughs> um, let's start with the European monarchs, shall we? Uh, Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg, of course. Uh, <laughs> King Carl, King Carl the Sixteenth Gustav of is course. how we. It's sort of how I mean that's a kind of a rap name more than anything else. <laughs> um, King Felipe the sixth of Spain, King Harold the fifth of Norway. You could have had Francois Hollande because he's the co-prince of Andorra. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Why did we not think of that? Uh, now let's take a look at the European capitals of culture: uh, Avignon, Helsinki, uh, Krakow. You could have had Reykjavik. You could have Bergen, Bologna, and Santiago de Compostela as well. They were all pointless yeah, answers. Easy. Now easy. there's two answers here: the capitals of the countries that use the euro. Only two pointless answers. Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia, and Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus. Low scorers, Luxembourg, which you were toying with, would have scored you one point. Oh, that would have been even cooler. Exactly. And you were talking about some of the Baltic states as well. Riga and Tallinn both would have scored you one point as well. Uh, Ljubljana and Valletta would have scored you two points. Very well done if you got a point in this answer at home. And what a terrific performance and a terrific show. Thank you, gents. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it's been fabulous having you on, Owen and Mark. Absolutely fantastic. Great performance right the way across the show. Owen and Mark have run fantastic. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.